What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of The Other Side of the Firewall, where we talk about the latest and greatest in cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who've made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shannon Tynes. What's up, what's up? And LeVon Maynard. Hey, how you guys doing? What is going on? Welcome to another great week. Uh, definitely tune in throughout the week. Monday and Tuesday, we go over our topics. Uh, then on Wednesday, we cover our discussions. And then on Friday, because I'm not going to guarantee you Thursday, because I've done a Thursday a long time. On Friday, we talk about everything but cybersecurity, right? So definitely continue to tune in. We appreciate your uh, your listener itch. I don't even know what that <laughs> word is. <laughs> I made up a word. We appreciate you listening and watching us. Uh, number, numbers uh, uh, don't lie, right? So we actually have people who, who are listening. So we greatly appreciate that. And we want to continue to uh, make it happen. So we're nearing the year mark. Coming up next month, uh, I believe it's mid-month, but I'll, I'll let you guys know as it uh, it comes upon us. But without further ado, I'll give it to Shannon for this week's topic. All right, everybody. So this article is from thehill.com by uh, Maggie Miller, and it's called Top Officials Turn Over Twitter Accounts to Share the Mic, Share the Mic. And I'm, I'm doing quote fingers because it's in the article. It's not just me being sarcastic. Share the Mic. <laughs> with black cybersecurity experts. Um, and this is a good article, right? So what happened here was you had some people in some high profile positions that actually um, turned over their uh, their Twitter for a day. Now, th- I'll give you what I like about this. I'll give you what I don't like about this. So what, let's start with the bad first. What I didn't like was that this only happened for a day. So they only did this for one day, which was on Friday, right? Yesterday for us, uh, two days ago for you, Ryan. But <laughs> they only did it for one day. Um, and that was something that I was like, I, I would like to see them hand this over for like a week, right? To give to give it, uh, it's real justice on what's really deserved from this. Um, but the thing that I liked was that they actually did this, right? So uh, the share the mic in cyber was the hashtag um, that they were getting the word out on this. And the officials that were participating in some of the hot, the, uh, the better known officials, I guess you could say, um, was Jen Easterly, who's the director of CISA. And we're familiar with CISA, right? Because our guest from last week that we had works for CISA. But uh, she handed over her Twitter account to uh, Ian Islam, who's the critical infrastructure portfolio lead at CISA cybersecurity division, vulnerability management insights branch. Um, so uh, Islam had the Twitter handle for a day um and again put some stuff out there to try to try to uh bring attention to the fact that there's not a lot of uh diversity in the cybersecurity uh field right now sorry about this my computer's giving me a little trouble right now here we go we're back it's flashing a little bit um but uh yeah so um he had it for a day um and he was uh, thrilled that what, what, what he uh, tweeted, I lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. He, he tweeted on here, uh, one of the first things he did was uh, thrilled to spotlight the cybersecurity star, right? Um, that's what uh, Easterly tweeted uh, that he was gonna, ha- because he was gonna have it for that day. Um, the other person they had on there was uh, Rob Joyce, who was the director of cybersecurity at the National Security Agency, the NSA, also participated in the effort, right? Um, and he gave his Twitter account over to Talia Parker, who was the founder and director of Black Girls in Cyber. And she's a privacy engineer at Google, right? Um, so here's the thing. Um, this is a good thing because it draws attention and it draws attention to some fairly high profile uh, Twitter feeds, right? That are out there. Uh, to try to bring attention to diversity. And one of the things they mentioned in here uh, is some of the diversity that's actually in the field. Let me find these numbers, okay? Um, so there was, let's see, Aspen Institute's Tech Policy Hub and Aspen Digital published a report last month highlighting the concerns of, about the lack of diversity, right? Um, and what it said was that uh, cyber workforce was overwhelmingly white and male, and notice that it was estimated only 4% of cybersecurity workers self-identify as Hispanic, 9% is Black, which is up a little bit from what I thought it was, because I always thought it was 7%, and 24% as women. Um, so the fact that they did this and put this out there is a good thing, right? Try to bring attention to it with more followers, right? Because these people, these people that took over the accounts for that day, they may not have as many uh, followers, you know, as uh, someone that works for the NSA or CISA. So it gets it out there. And that's one of the things I actually liked about it. But LaVon, what's your thoughts on this, man? 
yeah, I think it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's uh, it's a good way to just like you described to get the get the word out, let the uh, share the mic with some uh, some people of color that are in the cybersecurity field and be able to, you know, I'm not sure exactly what <clears throat> what like you know what they did with the with the time, like specifically all the uh, all the tweets that they shared, but it's uh, it's good nonetheless that they were able to get on there and be able to you know uh, capture some audiences that they wouldn't have uh, like they have before without the uh, the notoriety of those uh, those particular accounts um but yeah nonetheless it's it's a good thing i mean it's just uh it's one of the small steps that you know maybe can help bring light to the maybe the lack of diversity in, in the cyber field and it in general um and hopefully this kind of brings some more attention to it and uh we can get you know more people involved and maybe we can grow from here but um what do you have on this ryan what you think yeah so uh i what's crazy is because uh I'm not always on Twitter. I do mostly, I post and I get out of there uh, type situation. Um, but it happened so uh, either naturally, I didn't notice it. Like I, I noticed that SZA was tweeting more that day because I follow SZA now because of, uh, of Gabe Davis being on the show last week. Uh, and I, I saw I was a person of color, but again, it's, it's silos, right? So like the majority of my timeline are people of color in tech. So it happened for me so organically, I was just, I, 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 you know, I read the tweets and what have you, but I didn't notice the, the uh, account switch. They even, it even uh, uh, draw my attention in that way. So I don't know if that's good or bad. I guess it would be good in my case. Um, but bad on my part for having such a, a uh, myopic view of cyber, you know what I mean? Like I didn't notice it because that's all I see anyway. Um, so from a different person's vantage point, so if you were, were a white male, you probably did notice it, right? You saw the Jen Easterly's account uh, switch over. You saw, I don't follow Rob uh, Joyce, but I probably will now, just so I can, uh, I can track to see what, he, what he's talking about on a regular basis. Um, so I thought it was pretty cool. Like I, I found out about it after it was over. So like, like Shannon said, I wish it was longer. Like maybe we, uh, next year or whenever we do it for like a week, like you said, I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, I'm glad he did it. Uh, uh, again, uh, because of my aperture being so so laser beam focused, I, I didn't I didn't see it um, because all, all I see are black people or people of color in uh, in cybersecurity, uh, so specifically women. Because uh, a lot of my my I would say over half my feed is probably uh, black women in, in cybersecurity, uh, which I did not notice until now. So <laughs> I need I need to diversify a little bit, right? Um, yeah. But I thought it was pretty cool. Um, so hopefully they do it again. And, and I like that that number jump. So I'm not sure if, you know, because statistics depend on where you pull them from differ. But 9%, even though that's only 2% more, is a significant larger amount than 7%. So I hope that is true. Uh, and, and we are growing. Like I said, you know, it, it's going to be a slow progress, but we'll, we'll get 70%. <laughs> we'll take over. It's, it's only a matter of time. But uh, but no, I, I thought it was a cool initiative, and and I hope they keep it up. And uh, you know, uh, I try to lead off lead off each week with a a topic about uh, people of color in cybersecurity, if I can. This just uh, uh, hit my radar after the uh, the situation was over. So I wish I could have caught it before, just to put people on, like, hey, make sure you pay attention to these accounts. So perhaps they advertise a little bit better. Um, or like I said, I need to open my aperture up a little bit more so I, that way I can catch it. But again, cool initiative. Uh, I'm, I'm happy they did it. Uh, we do it every week, by the way. So <laughs> just the way we're built, <laughs> we're always passing the mic. So, uh, you know, uh, we'll continue to do that as well. And hopefully get more people on like Gabe Davis or Aisha Hollins or Chelsea Pierre uh, to, to share their uh their wisdom and their background in, in cybersecurity and just their their perspective, right? Because we, we are, uh, uh, not to say outnumbered, sounds like uh, a negative, but it's just to put it in perspective. We, we make up less than now 10%. Uh, so so hopefully we are we are growing and it's up, going on that upward tra trajectory uh, to, to breaching 10%, maybe by next year, never know. I mean, there's 3.5 million cybersecurity vacancies out there, right? So we just had to put the right people in the right places. So, you know, to, to address what you're talking about, though, about you not really uh, picking up on it because of the silo that you deal in when it comes to social media, um, it's, it's not a bad thing, but I don't think you were the intended audience, right? So because right. you're already in cyber, you're already a minority, 
I don't think it was to raise attention to something that you already know about, right? It's for those people out there that that may follow those those accounts that are maybe in the positions to do something about it. There may be a hiring manager that is not a minority, right? To be like, man, I did not realize that, right? Like when those facts come out over the Twitter feed, I didn't realize that. Maybe I should look into right. that a little bit more. You know what I mean? So um, not to say it, was a, it, it wasn't a failure or anything because you didn't pick up on it. But again, you, you're already hip to the game to what they're trying to promote. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're an opposite, opposite end and you're, you're, you're in the other you know, 91%, uh, and your entire timeline is just white males talking about cyber. And then all of a sudden, boom, there's a, you know, a, a man of color, a woman of color pops up. Yeah, that probably would throw you off a little bit. But like, oh, okay, that's different. I, I wasn't following this person. So maybe they're following them now. Uh, and that, that's also a numbers game, right? Like by spotlighting them, they probably receive thousands, if not tens of thousands of new followers um, that would have never followed them to begin with. Because they would never, like, again, it's like find a needle in a haystack from the other perspective. So, I think yeah, it's just to see some <laughs> of the, uh, some of the Twitter posts, but was there, there did any stick out, um, stick out in your mind in particular, Ryan, that you, if you had a chance to like review some of the, uh, cause I don't know if they had a good opportunity to like really express themselves on the, on these Twitter accounts. I saw the couple examples that they put on the article, but um, I had to dig through uh, to see anything else, but you had any so, thoughts on that? Yeah, so on the Jen Easterly um, side, because that, that's I was following Tizza, right? So I, I, I assume that's um, her account, or at least she she um, it's a companion account, right? I'm not sure if it's Tizza itself or if it's just her account. And obviously she's Tizza focused, but I also saw him on the because I followed the Tizza account, so I, I saw him on the Tizza account. And I was like, okay, maybe you know what I mean, like we because we just had Gabe Davis on, so I was like, okay, there's there's another person. Um, that per perhaps in the future, um, obviously we want Gabe Davis to come back, but there's there's diversity there. That is what, what I saw. So I was like, okay, there's, there's a few people over at SZA, um that can give us an interesting perspective or you know uh, fit fit our uh, our type of show. Uh, but yeah, he was just you know putting out facts and, and talking about initiatives coming up. So for for me, it was just uh, a regular day. Um, but now, now that I, it, it opened my eyes. I was like, you know what? I don't really follow anybody else. <laughs> right, right. Except for corporate accounts. Like if it's a personal account, I wasn't following uh, her personal account, but I was following their, their business account. But now I, I probably will. I probably will follow uh, uh, Joyce, uh, is it Easterly from SZA? And, and uh, yeah, and Easterly. Easterly. And or yeah, joint uh, uh, Jen Easterly and Rob Joyce. I, I, I'll probably go out mm -hmm. and follow their accounts now, just for not only for diversity for myself, but just to see if, if this initiative happens again, I'll, I'll actually pick up on it uh, sooner. So I, I see their game. <laughs> <laughs> they got me. They got me. They but got yeah, uh, I, I think it's a, a great initiative, uh, and I hope, yeah. hopefully it keeps happening. Like maybe this is not just an annual thing. Maybe they do it uh, on a more um, continual basis like let's let's do it every quarter let's do it every six months or something like that mm -hmm. um just just to show that that diversity so uh it's, it's good to see because uh, i was just complaining uh, not too long ago and not not to uh uh causes the segment to go a little bit longer but i was just i was just complaining that a lot of the gaming podcasts i listened to for a period of time when when things were really like the, we're in the midst of the pandemic and there were, uh, you know, the marches and all that, all the, the early two, uh, 2021, late 2020, uh, there was a focus on having uh, people of color uh, on each podcast. Like IGN did it a lot. Um, uh, who else did it? Because IGN has like four or five different podcasts I listen to. Um, but there, there was a, a, a movement there to get people of color who are in the gaming space uh, and to the forefront. And uh, it kind of tapered off. Like you kind of still see IGN do it with uh, Ryan McCaffrey, uh, Xbox Unlocked. He, he continuously has a, a person of color. He has diversity on his show. But a lot of the other shows, they kind of petered off. Uh, and they went back to being uh, the original cast. So I was just like, you know what? That, that was quick. <laughs> Let me go back to that. <laughs> but I, I like to see that these initiatives are still happening throughout um, social media. So I, I think that's pretty cool. Absolutely. It's a good thing to see for sure, without a doubt. Yeah. But I think that pretty much wraps up this segment. Uh, if you are out there, so if you're, you know, uh, a, a CISA or another organization who per participated, please continue to do so. 
Um, I, I think it's a, a great initiative and I think it's something that needs to be done. Um, just because these accounts are getting buried, like everybody's not like me, right? You're, you're almost your entire timeline isn't uh, focused on a particular group because that's, that's kind of the, the, uh, the, not my part-time job, but what I'm going for, right? That's, that's the movement uh, we're trying to do. So obviously that's my focus. Um, but if it's not yours, then perhaps you jump on uh, this, this bandwagon and, and begin to highlight some of your employees of color just to, to show that you have diversity within your work centers and to get their names out there. So people will start picking them up and following them. So uh, please continue to do so. If you're not, you know, uh, jump, jump on uh, the, uh, the movement. So uh, with that being said, please hit up the website, www.theothersideofthefirewall.com. We get to all social medias. Please send me up personally. I am at Rye Rye Security Guy. That's R Y R Y Security Guy. And Levon? You can hit me up on the Twitters at Levon Maynard. There it is. Stay safe, stay secure. Take care.